Everyone is building retaining walls in the same way. I've just built back-to-back -back retaining walls. I do something completely different. I just took this five and a half inch wood retaining wall and made it a 32 inch retaining wall. I will never build one without reinforcing it now. This is why, and here's how you do it. I'm building two retaining walls today out of six by sixes. And you know, for the trenching, this is gonna save you so much time. It's a square head shovel. I'm using it here on the back side of my trench. Why? Because it's the easiest and fastest way to dig a trench. Slice in, slice in. Once you get your backside sliced, you're gonna take the square head part of your shovel and scoop. Now this is beautiful because it's flat and it's making our trench flat, which is saving us time and it's saving us work. Now the key to a good solid retaining wall is a stable and well compacted base. This is my subgrade. My soil here, by the way, if you can tell is sand. Compact this. You can use a plate compactor if you want, but I find hand compaction with the tamper works very well. Now if you have some roots poking through, just cut those out. Okay. We're taking filtration very serious today because this is important, okay? This is your geotextile fabric. What do you choose? Now, what you really have to know is anytime you're using a geotextile or a filter fabric, it has to be non-woven for retaining wall construction if you're using wood or block wall. Now, why that is, it's critical. Non-woven, this material is actually fabric that is specially designed. Think of it like a coffee filter. It's gonna hold all of that soil and sediment, which is bad for drainage, but it's gonna allow the water to come through quickly and fast. That's what we want. We want the water to get out of here as quickly as possible. And this fabric will do it. The other kind that a lot of people are using does the opposite. Stay away from that stuff. Whatever you do, never buy this. If it looks like a tarp, it's gonna act like a tarp. It's gonna hold water and blow out your retaining wall. Do not ever use this stuff. Line your trench. You're gonna start with your trench first. I have two walls, so I'm gonna line this base, and then I have a return here. I'm gonna line it. You wanna try to also avoid folds if you can. You know, we got a corner here, so we're just gonna do the best we can. What you're looking for too along your trench is try to keep some tension here. We're gonna smooth this out and smooth it out. And then we're gonna staple it here at the top, keeping this as flat as we can before our drainage rock comes in. Let's keep going here. This is what we're using right here, biaxial geogrid. Biaxial geogrid is strong in two directions and it's used as a base stabilizer. If you watched my retaining wall from last week that I built, this is what we used on the base. However, if you have a concrete block wall or timber construction, it's gonna stabilize not only the timbers as they go up here, but this whole backfill. It's gonna to help to stabilize it, lock it in, interlock the, the aggregate, keep that nice and solid. Awesome improvement. If any kinks in your fabric, now's the time. Stretch it out. At the base of your trench, this is what you're looking for. Geo fabric, geo grid, and then we have gravel, aggregate. What we're using today, three quarter clear, aggregate. Let's go get more. Minimum six inches here for drainage and stabilization of our embedment layer. People always ask, why do I like these levels so much? Proof is in the pudding. We're looking for a level in both directions. Boom, six buys are gonna go here. We're gonna cut them up. Let's get them installed. Once you've made your cuts, let's just get this guy into position. I'm gonna take your six by six, there she is. Layer down, this is a nine footer. And then we're gonna anchor this guy right here in our trench. But before we do that, let's take a look at my six by six. You can spray it if you can, there you go. So just do it out here, keep it nice and clean. Try to keep it straight. We've got it up on a block. Let's try to pivot this into place. Okay, Ugh. so what we're trying to do here is line up these two corners. You can get a laser level on this or 
a string line if you want with a square, whatever you want. You gotta keep this at a right angle. Oh, for an eyeball, that's not too bad. <laughs> yeah, that's what we're looking for. Exactly what we wanna see. We wanna see that levels on everything. And a reminder, before you dig your trench, before you use rebar, always call before you dig. I'm using a two foot piece of rebar. You can also use a three footer if you want. I'm using two foot rebar here with my sledge. Like butter, do that. Wash, rinse, repeat. All right, on to the next. So this is the front of our wall. I've got a lot of muddy soil now. I've tucked the filter fabric, I've backfilled. I'm gonna tuck that in too. Second course going in. As you can see, this is the long piece of timber. This is the shorter piece. We're gonna stagger this. It's super critical now. For the strength of your retaining wall with wood, we always stagger. Now we're gonna do a Ross Geller. What's a Ross Geller? It's a series of pivots, here we go. Pivot. Ah, the good old pivot. Now this right here is what I'm gonna be using. It's a timber screw and it comes with a bit, by the way. It's star drive, see that? I'm gonna use mine. And these are exterior rated structural screws. Now, why I'm using this today, instead of these ones right here, which I've used for a very long time, is in case I make a mistake, because I'm talking to you, things can happen, you never know. Whoa, nice, <laughs> watch your rest. Oh, wow. Yeah, we could use an impact driver maybe on this. Nice, okay, so that really got a good solid hold. I like that. It's my first time using this, by the way, because I've always used this for a really long time. Now, a key component with retaining wall construction is your drain line. This is critical. You want it at the back of your trench. We've got our drainage rock installed. And I'm just gonna weave it around the back and you wanna get your level on it. You can see the bubble is on the left-hand side. That tells me that I have proper grading and I'm gonna make it daylight. So this is a term you should know, it's called daylighting. It's simply just taking your drain and the drain should see the sun. That is the most effective way to drain a retaining wall. It's gonna get rid of the water through our drain line right here. Critical. Do you hear those horns? It's telling you how important this is. Don't miss it, okay? Now, if you have ever been swimming in the bottom of a swimming pool or lake, you're gonna feel all that pressure squishing in on your body. That is hydrostatic pressure. Hydrostatic water that is not moving. It's the same forces that are gonna be applied on your retaining wall, pushing it forward. That drain line there is gonna take the pressure off and don't forget, component number two, critical, lots and lots of backfill. Let's see how much we actually need. You're gonna need a lot. And a tip, as high as our retaining wall is right now, that's how far I'm going back with the backfill. So if it's 32 inches high, I'm going back 32 inches. And why? Well, we've learned from experience. Drainage is so critical, okay? Now there are two important terms you need to know in wood retaining wall construction. Number one is your tie back. Now your tie back is literally gonna tie your retaining wall back into the soil. I like it when they keep it simple and that's this part right here. Now a rule of thumb generally is your tie back is gonna be the height of your wall. So if your wall is 32 inches, your tie back is going to be 32 inches and my deadman is minimum two feet across, which it is, and we're gonna anchor it with two anchor points. Now, all of this is very important because your tie back and your deadman is a structural element that's gonna help take the pressure off your wall here and literally tie it back in to the ground to help relieve some of the strain from that hydrostatic pressure that's coming in from this backfill right here. The best tools are the ones you use all the time. Speed square, nice and plumb. And I'm using two here 
because I don't want this to shift. I want this to be nice and flush and I don't want it, any movement here. This is nice and flush. So what we're looking for here, solid compaction and we want this in the line with our wood, okay? Critical. Now, if you build a retaining wall, you should absolutely reinforce it. It makes no sense to do all this work and not. Now, what you're looking at here is called a uniaxial geogrid. That means its strength, its tensile strength runs in one direction, which means when you get a roll like this, you have to unroll this perpendicular to your wall, right? This is the wall. We're gonna roll it out like this on our backfill material. So all I've done here is I've cut my geo grid from the roll and I'm just gonna spread it out and you can take some scissors and cut along here if you have a curve. If not, you can go the full width of your first piece. You wanna make sure it's nice and smooth flattened out and now we can get our second piece. Now, if you don't use GeoGrid, your retaining wall is literally five and a half inches, retaining tons of soil, right? And what the GeoGrid does is take that little skinny tower and pushes it out the retaining wall system to a full 32 inches wide. That is four tons of backfill. So that's an increase in size from the five and a half inches, that little skinny tower to an increase in of size and weight. And you want to have a substantial retaining wall system to hold back the tons and tons of soil on your hillside or slope, right? For my second piece of GeoGrid that I'm laying down, you cannot overlap these. These cannot be touching on top of one another. They have to be installed side by side. So I'm just gonna use a little clip here, a little staple in the corner. Okay, so with our GeoGrid installed here, now we're ready for this piece of lumber here. I've staggered, as you can see, keeping that nice and flush. And this has flattened out, which is great. <laughs> I am just making sure that when I put this on, this is gonna be stretched out, which it will be fine, okay? But nothing's showing. I'm gonna lift it into place now. There, there, boom, okay. These are nice because they're flush, they countersink, right? So after I got my corners locked, I don't want them to move. I'm just gonna make sure that the rest of the retaining wall is looking good and I lock it in place so that it is nice and we get that vertical line that we want. So another big advantage of the GeoGrid right here is that it's gonna stabilize the backfill. So the first layer of GeoGrid that we did reinforced this wall here by pulling it towards the backfill. So we reinforce this whole wall going that way. Now, what about the front corner here? Remember the tensile strength was going in this direction, which doesn't help this corner here. So what I need to do for this corner, because I wanna reinforce it back here into the backfill is take my geogrid and I'm gonna place it over the retaining wall and pull it back this way. And this whole area now this corner is going to be reinforced, tying it into the backfill. So the strength is pulling this retaining wall over here, gonna flatten this out and then get our lumber. So our next piece of lumber is going here, lengthwise, very long. Let's put this in place to see how it looks. So with the six by sixes in place, this is, has literally locked down our geogrid. It's not going anywhere and it's reinforcing the backfill now. I've got the backfill going in. That's what we're gonna do now. And this is gonna stabilize all of the aggregate. Choose the nicest lumber, cause you're actually gonna see two faces of it, right? So I'm actually just using the existing garden soil here. It looks flat, but it's going slightly in that direction. And then on this side too, grading is really important. Anytime you do a retaining wall, just keep it away from the edge of your wall. So I have a tip for you. Do you see how there's a gap in the fence right there and you can see out to the city sidewalk, which you know everyone can see you? See where this rake is? This is called strategic planting. I'm gonna plant something right there so that this is totally screened. And I got garden soil and manure, because like if that's not a good time, I don't know what is. All right, let's get it in the hole. So what's key here, we don't want to undermine the retaining wall. That's the most important thing. And the pretty side of the tree right here is facing outwards, okay? 
That is looking good. This is a beautiful tree, by the way. And I get so many compliments on this tree. It's a European hornbeam. It's compact and it's gonna look amazing in the spring and summer because this is the off season. This is strategic planting, beautiful tree. And behind me is Canada Post. Do you see that truck right there? That is our mail service here in Canada. And they were kind enough to help me plant this tree right there. It was too big for me. I tried to plant it on my own. Canada Post helped me out. Okay, and don't forget, save those offcuts for garden bed edging. It looks great with the retaining wall. That's what I'm doing in the next video. I'll see you in the next one. Thanks so much.